Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are, this is a blessed day that the Lord has granted us. And uh, He's so wonderful. He wants us to know, to experience the kindness and the goodness. Uh, that is found in him and i want you to always understand that if you don't begin with, from love it will be so hard so so hard for you to in fact it will be impossible for you to know god all right so the knowledge of truth have should be based you begin with love. That, that's the key. You begin with love. Whatever that is not begun in love, you miss out God. It doesn't matter which kind of power, right, that you have, but you exercise, you will realize that power that does not operate in love is going to be so hard, so complicated so tiresome it will you there's nothing like resting and also flow if love is love creates rest love produces power love is everything when you don't know god in love and the lenses of love then you are not supposed to think that you know god you should know that you don't know God and yet you are you might claim that uh, you know something about him begin with love and that's the key begin with love all right begin with love that's where the success is that's where the success is begin with love and then all of us are supposed to begin with love all right in uh, second first peter chapter 2 talking about uh, man all right now peter reveals us what has happened what we became all right um in verse 8 he talks about this he says and the stone that will cause stumbling and the rock that will give men offense they stumble because they disobey and disbelieve god's word as those who reject him were destined appointed to do all right i want to use another version is called uh, in the king james version and the stone of stumbling and the rock of offense they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed so the word was appointed to them the word was there for them but instead of receiving the word they stumbled it became an offense to them that means christ jesus became an offense to some people and when he's, he's an offense to people they will never never enjoy or take advantage of of uh, of the beauty of that rock or the beauty of that Christ Jesus was the stone in fact because he, 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 he reveals us that therefore to you 
who believe he is a precious he is precious precious but to those who are disobedient he is the stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone so christ here revealed as a as a as a chief cornerstone and when people believe in him he becomes a chief cornerstone to them because uh, this is, means that they can build an a successful building a home a house then before that i'd say the stone which the builder rejected so there's a rejection of the stone of the of uh, uh of the certain stone that became a chief build a uh, chief cornerstone and this stone represents christ jesus here and so he says those who disobeyed it, it became an offense uh, but those who believed he became an a rock this rock which is supposed to protect uh, strengthen cover them uh, they now it they were offended and it became a stumbling block so those are two perspective of pers- yes perspective of Jesus Christ to them to some it will become they will see him as a blessing others might see him as a stumbling block as because they don't want to believe in him they don't want to open up their hearts for him all right now verse 9 it says but you are a chosen generation all right this is amazing now he's describing who we are in the he puts it in certain words that are just uh, inspired by the holy spirit it says but you are a chosen generation so you are a chosen generation comma a royal priesthood all right a chosen generation a royal priesthood okay there is a chosen generation a royal priesthood so these are deep things that uh, we need to understand because he says we we are trying to understand who man is he says you are a chosen generation now this idea of a chosen generation but you are a chosen race all right now there's always these ideas in the past you know even today uh, some of these ideas are still prevailing all right in some places but for example let me, let me put it this way because many are acquainted with the jews um thinking that they were chosen of god uh which is true but they were chosen for a purpose uh, so that god may reveal his plans and purposes of what he was to do for the whole world through jesus christ choosing all of us in him all right now this time it won't be the jews or gentiles not about jews or gentiles so what we have here we have um the jews uh as an example of uh, the church all right that was chosen and um they seem to have to enjoy the privileges of knowing god and working with god and they saw the oracles of god and the the presence of god they 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 had this privilege right and uh, during all that time before they arrived Jesus Christ you might call them a chosen race so a- again throughout history there've been you know different uh, ideas about uh, races that were superior to others and this has uh brought about uh, a lot of chaotic uh, situations and uh killings um the, in fact even the slavery itself where black people were trade they were taken you know to be use as slaves here and there the whole idea was a superior race 
all right that there's this inferior race and the higher the, the superior race and that was used in a very very negative way um it had a very negative impact uh, and even some effects are still on today all right the issue of race you know that this is a superior race you know or is these things for for instance in the kingdom during the the roman empire the romans thought the, the, they were the best all right and before them there were the greeks you know the greek who are, who are actually exercising you know they used to keep their bodies in shape because they thought they were the best in the world and they are they were they were supposed to be strong and, and exemplary to the whole world because it was the, the best race, all right, the Greeks. In the, you know, this is the tendency, you know, you might think about uh, black, white, or uh, kingdoms, and but that is in human nature, on the fallen man, that they always want to be superior, all right, over others. They want to be better than others. But... And this verse Paul now uses this, he says, okay, you people, you are fighting for, you know, the superiority, but it's something that Christ Jesus has done, all right, that when you discover it, you will just be shocked that, okay, you're not supposed to fight for it because here it is, okay, that's who you are. Amen. It doesn't matter where you come from or the race or black or white or a Roman or Greek or Gentile or uh, a slave or master. It doesn't matter where you are now. The moment you discover your true identity, you realize, it says in verse 9, but you are a chosen race. All right. The chosen race, that means you are separated. You are made special. In other words, it says, look at yourself as a special person wherever you are. Whatever you do, it makes no difference here, you know, whether you are from the palace, another one is from a, a, a very poor background, or it doesn't matter, that is not the case here, but you are a chosen race, okay, a chosen race. Being a chosen race is something amazing because it reveals us that you have no business with inferiority whatsoever. You are the superior race. Whoever you are, you are. The, and that race is not, you know, race according to men. There is a version that uses this word, but you are a chosen generation. Look at yourself as a blessed generation. A blessed race, a blessed person, a blessed people. I mean, this is what he wanted you to see. Okay? And this is something that, like I said, in history, people are fighting to be the blessed ones, the, the happy ones, the best ones, the first, the superior people, nation, I mean, even now, people are still fighting for that. Now, he says, don't fight for it because you've got it. Amen? You've got it. You were chosen. You were a chosen generation. You were a superior being. And this chosen generation, the superior being is superior to all things, to all men in the spirit and the flesh. You, you, you are superior. And you're not even superior compared to some people. No, you don't need to compare yourself. You are just superior. You're just special. You are not special compared to others who are not special. No, you are special. That's all. You are unique. That's all. You are great. That's all. You are blessed. Not comparing to others who are not blessed. That's not your, your focus. Your focus is that you are blessed. All right? And you don't need to compare yourself to anything or anybody. You are blessed. Just see that you are blessed. So see, but ye are. Do you realize it's not saying pray for it? It's not saying please believe for it. It says you are a chosen generation. Oh, glory to God. A chosen generation. That's who you are. That's what we have become. Glory to God. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.